this video, we're talking about inverse operations and the fact that addition and subtraction are inverse operations and multiplication and division are inverse operations. And the way that we illustrate an inverse operation is let's take, for example, an addition problem. We have seven plus four. We know that seven plus four is equal to 11. The fact that addition and subtraction are inverse operations tells us that if we then start with 11 and subtract four, we should get back to seven, the number that we started with. And of course, we can see that that's true. If we say 11 minus four, we get seven. So in other words, if we start with seven and we add four, we get to 11. If we then start with 11 and we subtract four, we get back to seven. So you can see here what's left is the positive four and the negative four. Those are opposite numbers. So that tells us that addition and subtraction are inverse operations. We can do another example here where we start with subtraction. So we're going to start with six and we're going to subtract two. Six minus two we know is four. Now if we start with four and we add the two back in, of course we're going to get back to six the original number that we started with. So you can see here, we started with six and subtracted two and ended up with four. Here, if we start with four and we add two, we get back to six. So basically when you take a number out and add it back in, you're gonna get back to the same thing. What we could say too, is if we start with any number, let's just put in a placeholder, let's call this number X. We're gonna start with just some value. If we add four and then we subtract four, so if we add four and then we subtract four, what are we gonna get? Plus four minus four is just zero. This is gonna go away and we just have X plus zero. We know that zero is the identity number for addition, which means that if we add zero to anything, we don't actually change the value of the thing that we started with. So X plus zero, doesn't change the value of x, we still just end up with x. Same thing here with this second example. We just started with some value. This time we'll call it a. We started with six, but we'll just put in a placeholder and call it a to illustrate the point that we could start with anything at all. It doesn't matter what it is. If we start with something and we subtract two first, and then we add two back in, the negative two and the positive two cancel with each other and we just have a plus zero, a plus nothing. We haven't changed it at all, and we still just end up with a. So this is to illustrate that addition and subtraction are inverse operations, adding something and then subtracting it back out or subtracting something out and then adding it back in isn't going to change the value of whatever it was we started with. Well, multiplication and division are the same way. So in this case, if we start with three and we multiply it by five, three times five gives us 15. Then if we start with 15 and we divide 5 back out, we of course get back to 3. 15 divided by 5 is 3. So in other words, we started with 3 and we got to 15, or we can start with 15 and dividing by 5 we get back to 3. We can also do this backwards and start with division. If this time we start with 20 and we divide, 20 divided by 10 we know gives us 2. So we started with 20, we got to 2. But if instead we start with two and we this time multiply by 10, we're gonna get back to 20. Two times 10 is 20. So we get back to the same number, 20. So what this tells us again is that if we start with any number at all, it doesn't matter what it is, any value. In this case, we started with three, but if we start with anything, we'll call it X. And we multiply by five and then we divide by five divided by five. Because multiplication and division are inverse operations, multiplying by five and then dividing out by five, these two are gonna cancel with each other and we're just gonna be left with x. And another reason we know that is because remember over here we said that the identity number for addition was zero. If we add zero to something, we're still just gonna be left with that original value. Adding zero doesn't change the value at all. Well, when we're dealing with multiplication, multiplying by one, one is the identity number for multiplication, multiplying by one isn't gonna change the value. And if we rearrange this here, x times five divided by five, we can call it x times five divided by five. Remember when we have a fraction here, we say five divided by five. So essentially we've said x times five divided by five. Well, five over five, we know from fractions, is just one. So this is essentially x times one, which we know is just x. That's why this doesn't change, because when we multiply by five and then divide by five, it's like multiplying by one. And since one is the identity number for multiplication, 
we know that multiplying by 1 doesn't change the original value. So here we still ended up with x. And we can do it the opposite way too. If we started with 20, and we'll just call this a, if we start with any number at all, and we divide by 10, so dividing by 10, and then we multiply back in by 10, dividing and then multiplying again by the same number isn't going to change anything because that's just like this example here, multiplying by 10 and dividing by 10. We're still just going to end up with a. It doesn't change the original value. So that's how we show that multiplication and division are inverse operations in the same way that addition and subtraction are inverse operations.